In this video, I want to walk you through the basics of installing a Romex cable into a load center. Here we go. The first thing we want to do is punch out a hole at the top or the bottom where the Romex is coming. This one just happens to be coming from above. And typically, we want to do a knockout in the back, okay? And then we want to work our way forward. How you punch this out in a lot of ways will be up to you. A lot of people will come in here with the screwdriver. Then they will come in with a pair of pliers, grab this, bend it a couple times, twist it off, done. The next part is to install a connector for the Romex to go into, all right? Now there's a lot of rules to these and sizes and all of that is on their specs, but you put this in and then this will go on to the bottom. We're gonna come in here with the screw and we're gonna tighten this up. Now they make tools for this, as you can see here on the side, that make this a little bit easier. All right, once this is in there, we want to make sure that the top is straightforward, which I'll show you here in a second, so you can make sure you can tighten that Romex up when it's ready. And then they make a tool that will actually tighten this in there for you. Most electricians will carry a screwdriver that they're not a big fan of, okay? Come in here. Put the flathead screwdriver right there. Give it a couple knocks, make sure the top doesn't twist, and it's in there. I know some people are a little bit against that, but it's totally personal preference. If you want to carry an extra tool around to do that, no problem. Okay, then we're going to take our Romex. Uh, we're going to run this into the connector, and we're going to begin to drop it down. All right. Then when uh, it's long enough, you're going to come in here. I really like carrying this uh, number two square bit around. It works a really well with a lot of electrical. We want to make sure this is flat right here. Tighten this down. You can see these have been used a couple of times. And you want to not be able to twist this out of the way. So you want to make sure that um, it's tight. Now, some people say that you can put two in here on, on, on the specs. It will say you can put two pieces of Romex in here. In most places, that is against code, so I'm not... Now, because this is for demonstration purposes, I'm going to just lightly tack in the Romex here because I will be taking it out. Okay, some people are starting to use uh, these rubber inserts that lock them in. You'd have to check with your local code to see if those are required. Now, the one thing that will almost always, which should be done, is they should write somewhere along the sheathing of the Romex where this is coming from. Let it just be, you know, kitchen or hallway outlet or third bedroom or something like that to let you know what it is. Now, they make uh, Romex rippers that I know a lot of people like. I just don't happen to have one on me today. So I'm going to go ahead and use a, a box cutter utility knife. And I'm gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here from the top. We're going to lightly score this. And the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. And then at the very bottom, really give it a push. Right. Then along that score line, even with a dull blade like that, it will rip along this score line for you. Okay? Bringing this up to the top. All right. Then you can come in here with your utility knife. Cut this out. We'll come in here and take off this protective paper. So I like to leave a little bit in there, especially some people will leave a little bit in here identifying what this is for. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run this ground down here. I like to start with the ground. Now ours is a, uh, attached to the side over here because it is a sub panel. I'm gonna come in here and again with my number two and again, you can use a flathead screwdriver as long as it fits. And I'm going to use, because it's the first one, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the middle. Since I don't know specifically where the day is going to take me, I can leave a little bit hanging out. All right. Now, typically, the ground will come to one of these. But in this case, again, because it's a sub panel, I'm not going to be able to do that. And then I'm going to tuck this in, make it look pretty nice. And my ground is connected. 
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and strip the uh, white wire back, the neutral back. We're going to, we're gonna do this, we're gonna give this some space here. So we're gonna wrap this down, bring this into the neutral bar, and tighten this up. Now, with the neutral bar, you can only put one wire per screw, okay? All right, whether people follow that or not, who knows? So the next thing we wanna do is actually insert the circuit breaker. To do this, you clip it on, and then you push the forks, and it grabs on, and then it's in there, okay? And again, we wanna leave a little extra here, and we wanna strip the wire to the right, we wanna strip as much back as possible. Now on the side, they will tell you how much you're supposed to strip it so none's sticking out, okay? Most electricians won't follow that, but if you want to, you can. All right. All right. Then we're going to come in here. We're going to, I like to bend it a little bit like this, slide it into one of the sides. All right. And then you want to make sure when you're tightening this down that it doesn't crimp the sheathing. Okay. And so we push this in here, tighten it down. We have a nice, good, solid connection there. Then we'll fold this back, tuck it behind, and we're ready to go. All right, I will link another video down at the bottom of this to show you uh, another person, another really popular video shows the whole, uh, a whole wire uh, load center being installed and where you're running all the whites at the same time, all the uh, hots and all the grounds at the same time. Um, this is just how to install one single circuit breaker. All right, there you go.